Hey guys, I remember when my NECFS was at its worst and I would be feeling terrible. It would feel in these those moments like I had no control over what was happening. And if this happens to you, and if you watch my channel, I suspect there's a pretty high chance that it does. The good news is that in these moments, you might have more control over things than you might think. So imagine that you're in the middle of a symptom flare and by calming your nervous system, you can instantly or quickly reduce those symptoms and potentially even eliminate them. Now, I know this sounds a bit too good to be true, but I've had over a hundred conversations on this channel with people discovering patterns that can make a world of difference. So in this video, I'm going to share the top five techniques and all I'm asking of you is to pick one and commit to giving it a try. Don't try and do all of them. I see you, overachiever, stop. Just pick one that really resonates for you and consider giving it a try because it really could potentially change your life. All right, so the first one up is smiling. Now, I know it sounds way too simple, but smiling can be incredibly powerful, even if it feels in that moment that you're forcing it. Smiling is probably the fastest way that you can shut down your fight or flight system. So think about it. What clearer message could you give your autonomic nervous system that everything is fine than by smiling? So here's a way to really kind of paint a picture of this. So think of the, all the movies and the TV shows that you watch that have bank robberies in them all of the time. I don't know why there are so many bank robberies happening. But someone please tell me in the comments, do this many really happen in real life? Somehow I doubt it. But we are forever seeing them on TV and they all kind of look the same, kind of how we would imagine that they do go. The bank robbers, robbers, the, the bank robbers come in, they're armed, everybody's terrified and people have kind of three predictable reactions. One is that, like, am I going to be a hero? Am I going to fight off the gunman and save the day? Fight. Or am I going to bolt for the door and try and get out of here? So, flight. And Or some of them just kind of are paralyzed on the spot and can't do anything, can't follow directions. They just freeze. So a really clear depictment of that fight, flight, freeze response. And I can guarantee you that none of them ever None of these hostages are smiling. Nobody in the room is smiling because when you are facing significant threats, you are not smiling. Because when you smile, it initiates a whole chain reaction of good stuff in your body. There are endorphins and neurotransmitters released from your brain, things like serotonin, your parasympathetic nervous system is engaged, that rest and digest system. And this is all connected to when we are smiling. So when you smile, it kicks off this whole series of events telling your body that everything is fine. And so many people are finding that with their MECFS or long COVID, there is a brain body connection that is happening. So with your amygdala and your autonomic nervous system, there is a hyperactive or overactive um, fear threat assessment that is happening. And it's identifying way too many things as threats. So you are in fact, not a hostage in a bank right now. You are fine. So put a big smile on your face and, um, help let your body know that everything's okay. I interviewed an amazing health coach on the channel here. His name is Dan Boglio. I can link his video above. Uh, you can just click on it. It'll open in a new tab. You can save it for later. But he has this approach that your body is not broken. So we are just rewiring things to help it assess things properly. And he recommends in a symptom flare, lying in bed and staring at the ceiling smiling for five minutes. And it can feel really silly in these moments, but it can be really, really powerful. All right, the next one. Our brains listen when we talk, they listen when we think. So let's make those messages, those words that we are saying to ourselves really count. So think about times where you've felt good, comfortable, safe. What sorts of things do you say to yourself in those moments? Like you might be saying, wow, these, this place is so peaceful. It just makes me feel so calm and at ease. Or you might be giving someone a hug and you're thinking like, oh, I just feel so safe and warm and happy and loved. So write those sentences down that you say to yourself, whatever those specific sentences are that you say for you and keep them around you, keep them someplace that you can see them all of the time. And this is another hack 
for your nervous system and to deal with your symptoms as well. Imagine just having these on your wall, on your desk, on your laptop, as a screensaver on your phone. Just having those reassuring, comfort, comforting messages of safety coming at you all of the time, it can be also a really powerful thing. And if you want to take this a step farther, you can do what is referred to as the word swap game. I did an entire video about this. I can link it above. But essentially, in a nutshell, what it is, is taking words that can potentially trigger a fear response in your brain and your nervous system and replacing them with much more harmless kind of silly ones. So instead of using the word fatigue, you use the word banana. Instead of using the word pain, use the word pineapple. So I've got a pineapple out in my back right now and it's <laughs> making this movement challenging or even just doing the opposite. So whatever the negative word is, it's like, instead of saying, I'm really tired right now, you can say, I am feeling less energized in this moment than I would like to be. And even though you're acknowledging there is less energy, the word energized just has a different reaction. Our, our brain and our nervous system has a different response to it. So I recently interviewed a woman named Vanessa. She was incredible. She did the word swap game and she even got her family involved and taught them um, how it works. So her kids would say things like, wow, mom, you're having like a whole pasta salad today or a whole fruit salad. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what it was, but I can link her video above. Um, she was just really great. And both she and I both learned about the word swap game from a app called Curable. It is a science-based, evidence-based app meant for eliminating chronic pain. But many people with ME-CFS and long COVID are finding success with using these strategies for their recovery as well. It's an incredible app. I use it all the time. I learn so much. It's both um, information, so teaching you about... No, neuroplasticity and all of this. And it also has a bunch of brain training exercises in it that you can try. I've got an affiliate link that I'll link in the video description. It gives you six weeks free and you can learn a lot in six weeks. It's um, definitely worth checking out. All right. The next one on the list is calm breathing. So slow, deep inhales with even longer exhales are excellent at switching our body from a stress mode to a re relaxation mode. Hans Love, my video editor, sees me do these quite a bit when he gets the raw footage of these videos. So if I'm feeling stressed out or if I've had to do a part multiple times, I'll just take a moment and I'll do this breathing. So why don't you and I do it together right now and you'll see what I mean. And it's very simple. So you're just first going to take a slow inhale through your nose. So pause for a moment and then take an even longer exhale through your mouth. And see just immediately how much more calm and how much more relaxed you feel. It is an incredibly powerful thing. And for all of this, there is research out there to back this up. There was a 2017 study from Stanford that showed that controlled breathing can influence neurons the signal of relaxation. So this isn't all just woo. And we do it, we feel it, we know that it works. And there's another one that I can share with you. I learned this one in a meditation course that I took through Soma Meditation. I can link that in the video description. No affiliate link. It's just a great meditation program. I love spreading the word. But how it works is by doing a double inhale through your nose, sort of a longer one, and then a little top up, and then a slow exhale through your mouth. They call this one a psychological, or wait, physiological sigh. So again, let's just take a moment and do it together. You saw how good you felt after the last one. Imagine how good you'll feel after this one. So big inhale through your nose and then a little top up and then a slow exhale through your mouth. So instantly better. The next one on the list is meditation. And you knew you weren't going to get through this video without hearing me talk about meditation because it is one of the most studied and scientifically backed things out there that you can do to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to calming your nervous system. It really amplifies relaxation and calmness and feelings of safety in the body. So during a flare-up, even five to 10 minutes of meditation can have a significant impact. I interviewed another incredible woman named Yale. I can link this one up here above as well. And she said that when she was bed bound, meditation 
gave her the opportunity to make her head a good place to be and really helped her on her recovery journey. And there are guided med meditations out there. There are a couple free apps that are great to have on your phone. One is called Calm and the other is called Insight Timer and they have lots of options for you to try. And last but certainly not least is time in nature. Time spent outside in nature has been scientifically proven to lower our stress and our cortisol levels. So forest bathing is a popular term and something that is backed by science. If you're really feeling unwell, going out for a walk in the woods might not be a possibility for you, but there are lots of options that you can do from any state that you are, any level of severity in your condition right now. There's an amazing woman that I interviewed named Rachel. You had to know that we were not going to get through this section about nature without me talking about Rachel and her squirrels. One of my favorite things of all time, but for the things she was significantly unwell, and one of the things that she credits as helping her to get better were squirrels. Squirrels in her backyard, either watching them through the window or when she was feeling well enough, going outside and spending time with them and feeding them. And another amazing thing is that our brains, there's very little difference in our brains between actually doing something and imagining doing something. So if you are not able to get out of bed, if you don't have any squirrels, or if you can't right now, it's even hard to get up and look out the window, you can lay in bed and put on a track of some nature sounds or some waterfalls or whatever your favorite nature scapes are and just lay back with your eyes closed and just picture your favorite creatures, your favorite animals, um, and use that as your forced bathing escape. So there you have it. Five things for you to consider trying. Just pick one and consider giving it a try. You would be amazed how these small things really can and do add up. Well, I think the little guy wants to come say goodbye. Kind of an unplanned bonus a uh, sixth one for you that is supported by science is that time with animals is really good for our autonomic nervous system. It's very soothing. It's very calming. If so, if you have a furry little friend and you're not feeling well, even just taking a few minutes, it's very soothing for us just to pet them, look in their eyes, have some little cuddles. Uh, so yeah. And our channel member shout out is to SM today. Thank you SM so much for joining. I really do appreciate the support and I appreciate all of you. Remember to keep hope really strong and front in, in your face in your life because these journeys can be ridiculously challenging. So we need things to keep us our spirits in the right place and keep us focused on where we're trying to go. I will link a playlist a playlist I made just for you. It's just full of uh, recovery stories that are really hopeful and inspiring. So you have hope at your fingertips. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in one of these next ones. Bye everyone. Thank you for watching. Great. We appreciate you. Sending you love. Lots of love. Bye, guys.